Hey guys, Robbie Webster here, and today I'm going to be doing my top 10 movies of 2013. And I didn't see anything, so I just want to make that a precursor to this video. I'm um, sure there's other things out there that I didn't have a chance to see and that are great, and that's probably why they're not on the list, or maybe I just have a different opinion from you. So just keep that in mind when making your comments. Let's get started with the top 10. Actually, in 10th place, I have a two-way tie for number 10. So this is really like a top 11. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to put the other part of my top 10 list, numbers 11 through 20, on my Facebook page. So look in the information down below and click on that if you want to see the first half of my top 20 list. And then I'll have a link to the video there so you can get back to this video. So let's start with number 10. Like I said, a two-way tie. The first part of the tie is... The Way Way Back, and this is actually only the slipcover because my friend is borrowing it. Um, this is a great coming of age movie, um, great cast, great acting. Uh, I really love Sam Rockwell's character in this. Uh, it's about a boy who um, goes on a vacation with his mother and then his overbearing, I don't know if it's his stepfather or if they're just, I think his mother's just dating this guy. And um, it's played, he's played by Steve Carell and he has some family issues and he meets Sam Rockwell who owns an amusement park like a water park and he gets a part-time job there it's just this really quiet kid and he starts to come out of his shell um, when he meets Sam Rockwell and it's just a really good drama and it has some funny moments in it I highly recommend this all right and the other half of the 10 spot is a movie that I know a lot of you know I really looked forward to and it didn't disappoint it was a great summer film it was probably my favorite film of the summer I would there was just a lot of disappointment this year with the summer blockbusters but thankfully there was a, a lot of other great films that came out other times of the year that helped me fill up this list because there was this was a great movie for films even though I was disappointed by this the big name stuff but this movie is Star Trek Into Darkness the newest J.J. Abrams Star Trek ad adaptation um, they did a great job with this, uh, especially the 3D was amazing. I I didn't I don't know if they did the first one in 3D in the theaters. I'm sure they probably did, but I didn't get to see it. And I saw this one; it was great. I loved it. I thought it had a great story. It was action packed. The characters were back, as good as the first one. And um, I think I still like the first one a little bit better, but this one's still a great sequel, and um, it didn't disappoint at all. Uh, there's really not much I could say to uh, to uh, deter people from watching this. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch was awesome playing Khan, um, the, the new bad guy, well the new reimagined Khan. Um, they changed things up with the story. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, there's a great fight scene between Spock and Khan too that's just like one of the best sight fight scenes that I've seen in a while. But um, yeah, highly recommend this if you haven't seen it. Alright, in the number nine spot is another science fiction film. Uh, this is a great one. It's Elysium. Uh, starring Matt Damon. Um, I didn't know what to expect when I saw the trailers for this one, but when I went in, I was I was very satisfied by what I saw. I thought it was a really great original film. Um, you know, there's some overacting by certain characters um, and some, you know, kind of gimmicky action stuff, but it was a fun movie and good sci-fi. had great special effects, and I thought it was an interesting story and a cool concept, but I, I definitely recommend this. That's why it's my number nine. And I'll show you this uh, steelbook while I'm at it. This is the Target exclusive steelbook. So there's the front and the back artwork. And then on the inside, you've got Matt Damon there holding that cool gun that he had. Pretty good movie. I saw it twice in the theater. Uh, the second time, I only paid a dollar to see it. But um, first time, I walked away thinking, wow, I, I thought it was like going to be in my top three. But after watching it a second time, I kind of got a more realistic opinion of it. And it moved down the list a bit because there was a lot of other good movies this year. All right, at my number eight spot, I have another science fiction slash fantasy film. And it's also another sequel. It's The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Um, amazing film. I was not, uh, my expectations were not super high. Um, I enjoyed the first one. Um, I remember holding off on seeing the first one because I didn't know if it was going to be any good or not. I've never read the books to this day. I still haven't read the books. Um... And I was impressed by the first one. I watching it on Blu-ray, and I wanted to see the other one, the second one, in theaters. And I actually got Hannah to go with me, and she enjoyed it as well. I, I was just really blown away by it. It had an amazing ending. I love how they ended it. I think that's the perfect way to um, split up a trilogy. Even though I think they're going to turn this one into four films, they're going to try to split the last part into two films. I'm not sure how 
how good of an idea that is, but so far the first two films have been impressive, so hopefully those two will be great as well. Um, I really, really can't wait to see what happens next, but I highly recommend uh, Hunger Games Catching Fire. All right, at my number seven spot, I have a great film starring Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. It's Gravity. I'm sure this is really high on everyone's list this year. I, it probably could have been a little bit higher in mine. I, I, it's hard to decide with these lists which spot to put things in, but I thought it was amazing. Probably the best cinematography of the year. Some really cool uh, scenes in this that just went on forever and were just so epic. I was holding on to the edge of my seat the entire time. I saw it in IMAX and I really can't wait for it to come out on Blu-ray. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what it's about, it's just about a couple of astronauts that are doing some routine work up in space and there is a problem that causes a huge disaster and um, it basically follows Sandra Bullock's character trying to um, survive and find her way back to Earth, and it's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, really great um, suspense film. I highly recommend it. Okay, in the number six spot, we have Tom Hanks' newest film, Captain Phillips. Um, I thought it was a great film, very well acted. That's definitely a strong point, is the acting. There's some newcomers in this film that it's their first movie, and I thought they just blew me away. They did a great job. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, it follows the story of the Somali pirates that took over the, uh, I can't remember the name of the ship, the ship that they were on, but they took over this cargo ship and took the, the captain and the, um, some of the crew hostage, and, um, uh, I think, I don't want to give away the ending if anyone doesn't know the story, but the movie's very good, they did a great job adapting it, Tom Hanks, of course, just blew, his performance just blew me away, amazing performance. All right, in my number five spot, this is another film with amazing acting. It is Prisoner, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Hugh Jackman. And Jake Gyllenhaal just blows it out of the water. Amazing performance. He's probably, my, in my opinion, best actor of the year. Uh, I would definitely want to see him get nominated at least for this uh, phenomenal film. It's about um, two girls go missing. Um, on It's Thanksgiving, and um, two families that are friends with each other are getting together and the two girls that are that are friends um they go outside to play and they never come back so the the fathers are looking for them Hugh Jackman plays one father and um Jake Gyllenhaal plays a detective that's trying to find them as well and it's just an amazing film really really crazy acting um sus very suspenseful and I highly recommend it all right and my number four spot is the Place Beyond the Pines. This is a movie I saw very early in the year starring Ryan Gosling, Bradley Cooper. Both of them are amazing in this. And I haven't seen it since that time in March, but it stayed up very high on my top 10 list the entire year. I really loved it. I felt a strong connection to this film. And I'm just going to direct you to um, a review that I did of it if you want to know more about it. Because I really like just poured my heart into that review. It was a one take and I just sh tried to share my feelings on it and I thought it turned out pretty well. So I'm going to po point you to that link down below as well. But this is my number four selection. It's an amazing film and I definitely recommend that you see it if you haven't seen it already. All right, I'm going to try not to talk about this next film too much because it's something I really love. But um, this was number three was definitely my most anticipated movie of the entire year, even more than the Star Trek Into Darkness. It was The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. I thought Peter Jackson just did it again, blew it out of the water. I've said that phrase so many times. I really got to think of another way to say this. I don't know why that stuck in my head today, but it is. So I apologize. But man, that movie was amazing. And Benedict Cumberbatch is in this one as well. He plays Smog. He plays the voice of Smog. And he also did um, some motion capture um, performance to for the dragon itself. Um, and I'm sure we'll see more about that on the special features of the extended edition Blu-ray. Which, by the way, if you haven't had, if you haven't picked up that for the first film, you need to. The two documentaries on there are amazing. Um, but yeah, this film was just spectacular. It was epic. Had some amazing fight scenes, some some really good action, great storytelling. Oh, I loved it. The performances were great. It was just the perfect like blockbuster movie, in my opinion. It, it's right on on par with the Lord of the Rings, even more than the first one. And I, I really did love the first one. I grew to love it more and more the more times I saw it. I've seen it several times now, especially since the extended version came out. But I definitely highly recommend seeing that movie, seeing both of these movies if you haven't already. They're, if you like the Lord of the Rings, you will definitely like The Hobbit. 
All right, my there's only two spots left, and it was really difficult to decide which of these films should be number one and which should be number two. Um, one of them I've seen very recently, and one of them I I saw back in I think April or May. So um, one of them has lasted a long time, but they're both amazing films. I give them somewhere between a nine and a ten out of ten. Um, I don't really give out a lot of tens. Um, I try to reserve those for for movies that I feel like just are gonna last and last and last like um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, or Forrest Gump, or Saving Private Ryan, or, Schind or Schindler's List, um, Shawshank Redemption. Those are just some that come to my mind right off the bat that are just 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, Seven Samurai, stuff like that. But um, these films are right up there, really close to me giving them a 10 out of 10, and maybe someday I will give them a 10 out of 10. But let me just tell you the number two right now. It's 12 Years a Slave. Unbelievable film really powerful and emotional great story i went out and bought the book and read it because the book is actually written back in 1853 i believe by the man who the movie is about he's the he actually wrote this book and just knowing his story from the movie m made it so that i had to go get that book because just knowing what he went through and that he actually was able to get himself published it must have been such a difficult thing to do back then and uh, Amazing film. Uh, I'll just give you a, a quick synopsis of it. Uh, the main character is a freed black man. He's not. He's not a slave. He's a free man, and um, he's basically kidnapped or he's tricked, and he becomes a slave. He becomes owned by these these people. He goes through several people, and you know what? This is the third movie this year that has Benedict Cumberbatch in it. Benedict Cumberbatch's character is pretty good in this one too, but um, he becomes a slave, and he's he's stuck there and um, he's trying to find a way to survive and to he, to try to get out and get back to his old life he has a wife and children that don't know what happened to him and um, there it's just a powerful film I highly recommend seeing it I will say it is there are some scenes that are extremely difficult to watch with some um, basically torture scenes and um, I mean there there's nothing it's it's just graphic it's nothing that's um, what's the word it, it's not out there to just be gross or whatever it it's just to be powerful it adds power to the movie seeing what these people went through and i'm sure it's not even close to what really they really went through but highly recommend this film 12 years a slave phenomenal film all right and last but certainly not least my number one film of the year mud starring matthew mcconaughey matthew mcconaughey has really just come on strong the past few years he's He's really he's had some good roles back in the late 90s and stuff. If there's a few of them I really like, but I think he was kind of a joke to some people. But the past two years especially, he's been in several really good films, and his performances were amazing. And that's the same thing here in this movie. And I haven't seen this since like April, so it's it's hard to remember all the details of this. But um, it's about a man. Well, first of all, it starts with two boys. They go um, to this little island and um, that they know of, and they knew they knew about this. Uh, boat that had been stuck up in a tree during a storm and so they go to this boat because they want to turn it into like a fort or something I can't remember if they want to turn it into a fort or if they were going to try to pull it out of the tree I think it was turned into a fort and when they go up there they realize that someone's been living in it and they soon discover that it's Matthew McConaughey's character Mud that's his name and um, he's basically on the run from the law the law enforcement's looking for him and it's kind of a love story that the boys find out why he's in trouble and that you know he's really a good person and he you know it's just a great story they're trying to help this guy and he's trying to get back with the woman that he loves phenomenal acting great storytelling michael shannon's in this he has a small role i really really love this film and i highly recommend it that's why it's my number one of the year all right guys so that's my top 10 i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got some ideas for some films that you haven't seen yet um i really love to see your top 10 so please post a link to a video if you have it down below or go to my Facebook page and look at my top 20 list and just list your top 10 or 20 down there and hopefully I'll find some films that I haven't had a chance to see yet and I'll and I'll know that they're good because you recommended them and I'll see them. <laughs> so yeah, there are um, definitely several movies that I really wanted to see before the year ended but I just didn't have the chance, don't have enough time. I did see 40 movies this year in 2013 and that's a ton for me but um, it was a struggle to see them um, but yeah. I enjoyed making this video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks. Bye.